the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. One thing about lockdown is that many of us saw lots of movies. And one documentary that won an Academy Award this year was My Octopus Teacher, a South African film. It's on Netflix, and if you haven't seen it, I strongly recommend it. The filming is amazing. And it's the story of a wildlife photographer, Craig Foster. And he suffered from burnout. So he took time out to swim and free dive in False Bay, the Western Cape, where he grew up as a child. The sea was icy, nine degrees. But Craig didn't wear a wetsuit. He just wore his costume and a mask and fins. And he would dive down into the kelp. And there he met a little octopus. And he looked at the octopus, and the octopus looked at him and was very curious. And he was curious about the octopus. So he took down his camera and started photographing everything and taking videos. And the film is about the life of an octopus over the course of a year, which is the lifespan of an octopus. And it's about the relationship between Craig and this little marine animal. Craig was amazed at her intelligence. This marine animal strategized how to kill a prey to eat. And then she knew how to camouflage herself to put off sharks from eating her. And she played with the fish. Craig put her intelligence equal to a clever dog or a cat, but I'd say actually a clever dog or a cat. And as they swam and they got to know each other, the trust between them grew. And there's a very touching scene when he's holding onto a rock to watch her, and this tentacle comes up and just holds his hand. Through watching the octopus, he sees that suffering from injury and sacrifice is part of her life. Now the suffering happened because a pajama shark, called a pajama shark, because it has stripes like pajamas, and it attacked her very badly. The sacrifice came when she laid thousands of eggs and then had to get everything of herself, all her energy into the eggs so that they would grow into being little octopuses healthy little things, and this took about a month, and then she died. Craig mourned when she died, but he realized how much he had learned. He saw how precious wild places are, and to care about life in all forms. By caring more about nature, nature taught him to be more sensitive, more thoughtful, and he found his relationship with his family better, especially that with his son. And Craig said he got so much from nature that he could start giving back. And no longer does he dive alone, but he takes out groups and educates them. And he still dives down and still takes pills. God speaks to us through scripture and nature. And this is echoed in the Hebraic scripture, Psalm 92, which is the psalm for today, where the first half tells the virtues of nature and the second half tells the virtues of God's word. In today's gospel, Jesus asks his disciples, who do you say I am? And Peter says, you are the Christ, the Messiah. And Jesus says, yes, that's right. But in the next paragraph or so, see that Peter didn't really understand because he was going to the end where Christ is glorified. And Jesus has to tick him off quite severely because the suffering and what he went through in the death was part of Jesus' life work. 
Now, Richard Law, that famous um, Catholic priest, he reminded us about Easter and the morning that Mary went to go into Jesus' tomb and she meets whom she thinks is the gardener. And it's only when Jesus says, Mary, that she realizes it is Jesus. And she says, Rabboni, teacher. But Richard Rawls says, what if Mary was right the first time and Jesus was or is the gardener, the master gardener, the cosmic Christ, the master gardener of the universe? The cosmic Christ was and is always with the Creator and the Holy Spirit right from the beginning. Through him, all things were made, quoting John chapter 1, verse 3. God's spirit or energy is in everything God made, all beings, human, animal, bird, fish, or plant life. So God experiences exactly what is happening today to us and to the earth. Unfortunately, today, we are all living in the sixth extinction, which is unique in Earth's history because it's been caused by human beings and not an asteroid. By burning fossil fuels and cutting down forests and general pollution, human beings have drastically increased the temperatures plus the acidity of the ocean water. And that means that sea creatures, unless they will adapt, will die out. We're not visitors on planet Earth. This is our home. Actually, we are part of her. Our very bodies are made of the Earth's elements. The liquid we have inside us is salt water. We humans are totally reliant on nature. The air we breathe, the water we drink, and the food we eat. All of life is interconnected. Reverend Tim Gray wrote, we need to rediscover a theology of creation which dissolves any notions of our human superiority. As Craig did with the octopus teacher, let us discover the wonders of nature and allow nature as well as scripture to teach us in order to hear the Master Gardener, the Cosmic Christ, guide us where we need to grow, where we need to heal in our lives, in our habitat, and in the world. Amen.